Hello and welcome to Portfolio Matters Share Talk. In today's episode, we will be discussing the North Sea oil and gas developer and producer Serica Energy. Its portfolio is 80% gas. But before we get into it, I will read the disclaimer. Everything discussed during the Portfolio Matters podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Listeners should be aware that we will be discussing securities that we own or have a financial interest in. Please do your own research or consult a professional investment advisor for making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. Full disclaimer can be found at the end. Okay, Richard is away, but... As you will have seen, the UK gas price is rising very quickly and with it, the share price of Serica Energy. So I wanted to get this out as quickly as possible once I've done the analysis. So I will be presenting this on my own. Okay, so Serica Energy is a London listed and it has exclusively North Sea assets currently. It has a market price of around 190p, market cap of 500 million. And it has cash, net cash of 90 million, giving it an enterprise value of around 415 million. Last year, it had revenues of 126 million. But this year should be a much better year, both in terms of the realized price for oil and gas and also its production is growing and it pays a dividend. Last year, the dividend yielded around 2.0% on the current share price and Stockopedia are forecasting a forward PE ratio of about 5.4. We have recently done a special podcast on the UK gas crunch. And we have also on Share Talk covered a couple of UK gas producers, that's independent oil and gas, and Harbour Energy, whose portfolio is around 50% gas, and Serica Energy is the third, and its portfolio is around 80% gas, and it should therefore be benefiting hugely from the recent rise in the natural gas price. And if you're interested in Serica Energy, I would urge you to watch our other podcast on the UK gas crunch for the reasons why we are invest- interested in Serica. In 2022, Serica will have a big boost in production in that its R3 well on the room field is now in production and in Q4, the Columbus field, which it has a 50% stake, will also come online. So its production is growing. In addition, it bought the uh, Bruce, Keith and Rum fields from BP and Total some years ago. And it had an agreement with them whereby it shared the revenues of those fields for a certain number of years after the purchase. That period has now expired. And from 2022, it will essentially get 100% of the revenues from that field. And so its revenues are due to grow just as the gas price is moving very substantially higher. It does, however, have 25% of 2022 production hedged 25% of production at prices between 37 and 46p, and the current price in the market is above £1.70. That's rather unfortunate. And it only has one exploration asset, which is due to be drilled, and that's North Egg. That's due to be drilled next year, and then really the cupboard is dry. They have some exploration blocks in the North Sea, but they have relinquished several of their other blocks in in the North Sea and Namibia during 2020. 
Okay, so this is share price. Actually, the share price has continued moving up in the last couple of days and now is around 185. So you will see that the share price is a it's been listed for a very long time and the share price took a massive jump in 2018 when it bought these um, declining fields from BP and Total. And if we go through the history, so it's been around as a listed vehicle for a very long time. And initially it was focused on Indonesia and Namibia. And it has frankly a history of exploration failures. So in 2010, it's Dambus one exploration well in Indonesia failed. In December of the same year, it's Marindan one exploration well also Indonesia also failed. Then in 2011, it bought four large exploration blocks in Namibia. In 2013, the well drilled in Morocco on the Foom Dra exploration well, which it farmed out to Ken, failed to find commercial oil and gas. So, so far, it has a 100% failure rate as of the end of 2013. Then in 2014, it acquired an 18% interest in the Erskine field, which is still in production from BP. And then in 2014, November 2014, the, its exploration well in Sidi Moussa, Morocco, also fails. So four out of four exploration wells have all failed at this point. In 2006, so going back before this chart starts, it had discovered the Columbus field in the North Sea. And in 2015, it farmed that out to BG and Scottish and Southern. Then in 2016, um, it had problems with the Erskine field due to a blocked pipeline, which needed to be, they needed to build diversion, a second pipe to go round the blockage basically. And um, that stopped production for the best part of six months. Moving on to more recent, events. The company essentially was completely transformed by its acquisition of the BP interest in the Bruce Keith and Rumfields in late 2017 for 12.8 million plus 39 million in contingent payments. But these, these are old assets and the infrastructure is aging and is causing problems. So in 2018, you had a blockage in the Lohman to Everest pipeline that shut in Erskine. In 2018, it acquired Total's interest in the Bruce and Keith fields, so increasing its own interest in those fields. And then in 2019, its exploration well, the Rowallan well in Central North Sea, Sea also failed to find any hydrocarbons, was plugged and abandoned. Now, its partner in the rum field was the Iranian State Oil Corporation. And when sanctions were instigated by the US on Iran, that had the potential to cause them problems. But they have assurance from the US Office of Foreign Asset Control that essentially they can continue working that field without consequences. Now, Earlier last year, the Bruce platform was closed because of decay to an underwater caisson. Now, a caisson is a sealed underwater chamber that is open at the bottom end. So divers can dive in from the bottom and at the top you have um, an air gap. And the caisson had been out of action for since 2009, but then the inspection discovered it was essentially rusting away. They had to close the Bruce platform to repair it. So in May 2020, they contracted a drilling rig for the RUM 3 well. And we'll see that is now on production. So the well intervention succeeded. 
than 15 years after the discovery of the Columbus field. In March this year, the development well was spudded and subsequently there were problems with that well and need to be sidetracked, but that was done successfully. And recently they have sex successfully flow tested the, well, the run three well and the Columbus development well. And the 2nd of September, they announced first production from run three, which has lifted run production from 26,000 barrels a day to 34,000. Okay, let's go through their assets. So they are, all their North Sea assets are east of Shetland, the Northern North Sea, they've got rum, Bruce and Keith and North Egg is their exploration asset that they are hoping to drill next year. And in the Southern Central, sorry, the Central North Sea, they have Erskine and Columbus where they're now just tying in the development well and hoping for first gas in Q4. The Scarivore field, they are a minority interest holder in, and that is operated by Parkmead, and that is um, also an exploration asset, but one in which they have quite a small interest. Okay, so they've now got four producing fields. They will have five when Columbus is tied in. And they, in 2020, they produced a net 23,800 barrels of oil equivalent per day. And their reserves are 61 million barrels, which is equivalent of seven years of current production. So they will need to keep on finding replacement assets. And 80% of their production is in gas which is great given the high gas price. And the although gas prices in the UK are currently extraordinarily high and those prices can't, can't be sustained, recent events have shown that the gas market is very tight. And I expect the gas price to remain well above 2020 levels going into the next few years. Okay, so these are the fields they bought from BP and Total, and Serica has extended their working lives. So Serica is the owner and operator of the Bruce Field, has 98% of that, 100% of Keith, and 50% of Rum. The chart at the bottom right shows the cash flow sharing agreement between Serica and BP and Total. You'll see that Serica's shares of cash flow increased steadily over the years, but in 2022, it will get 100% of the cash flows, just at the time when oil and gas prices are rising. So the Bruce field is a big old field, it has 21 wells and produces around 9,600 barrels of oil equivalent per day to Serica in 2020. Um, and Serica have succeeded in extending its life um, from 2026, when it was expected to be shut down, to now 2030. But in 2020, there was this deterioration of underwater, underwater caisson which took it out of action for 45 days. And in 2019, production averaged 13,100 barrels per day, which fell to 9,600 in 2020, primarily due to the uh, closure of the field before the case on repair. Now, Keith is close to Bruce, but is a small field. It's a single well and it's economic because it's close to Bruce and can be easily tied in. So in 2019, it only produced 450 barrels of oil equivalent per day. And in 2020, production was minimal because it was taken offline with Bruce when um, the case on issue came to light. And then remedial work on Keith could not be carried out. and. Um, it was not brought back into line. 
it was successfully worked over in Q1 2020 and further works was planned in Q2, but we haven't had an update on Bruce, Bruce since then. The rum field is 44 kilometers north of Bruce and production from rum is tied into the Bruce hub. And it's a strategic UK gas asset. So the Bruce hub produced around 5% of total UK gas production. And the R3 well has just been worked over. So the R3 well was done by the original developer who messed it up and there are various blockages and Serica have gone in and cleaned up the well at twice the cost of its the original estimate for the work but it is now online and is boosting rum production from 26,000 barrels work a day to 34, so up the best part of a third. Now, in the Central North Sea, it owns Erskine, but only has an 18% interest in that. The operator is Ithaca and that produced around 2,300 barrels of oil equivalent per day net to Serica. It is a field in decline. Okay, so what development assets has it got? Well, <clears throat> Columbus, which is due to come online in Q4, is its only near-term development asset. So it was approved by the UK Oil and Gas Authority for development in October 2018. So it took three years from approval to get it into development. And it has a single well. It owns 50% of the field with the remainder owned by two private companies. And in Q4, it is expected to start operation at a rate of 7,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day of which 75% will be gas. So Serica's share will be around 3,500 barrels. The exploration assets. Well, currently there's only really one. There's a North Egg, which is due to be drilled next year. And that is expected to be a high temperature, high pressure gas field, analogous to the rum field and South Egg. And then there's really not much because in 2020, in the oil and gas downturn, Serica withdrew from its licenses in Columbus West in the North Sea and also from Namibia. It does have a 20% stake in a Parkmead operated block, which we have previously discussed. Okay, the hedging program. And it aims to hedge around 25% of production and you can see this is from the last presentation and um, these are the hedges that were in place then. So it's 75% exposed to the rising oil and gas price. The hedge book as of 15th of April 2021 shows in, in H1 2022, it had hedged 200 therms per day at 40p, 50 therms, at 37p. Bear in mind the UK gas price is currently above £1.70, which is absolutely unsustainable, but still these hedges will have undoubtedly cost them a great deal of money. H2, it had hedged 50,000 therms per day at 46 and another 100,000 at 41, and you would expect them to have hedged a further 100,000 since then. Okay, so let's do a calculation, and we're just going to do a calculation on what we expect Serica's revenues to be next year, given their expected production and our estimates of what the oil and gas prices are likely to be. And this is the UK gas price, which has gone absolutely ballistic in recent days. And if you have watched our podcast on the UK gas crunch, you will have an idea why. So there is a shortage of gas from uh, Russia. So Russia has cut its supplies to Europe and the UK. And what's really sent the price through the roof in the last couple of weeks is a lack of wind. So they've had to restart the gas and coal 
fired power stations in compensation. Now, the, the gas price is completely unsustainable at one pound, one pound 75. It's a guess as to where it should settle. So I have penciled in 60p, which is above about 50% higher than its levels in 2020. And this is crude price. And I am bullish on crude, but we, for this exercise, we're going to pencil in an average 2022 price of $70 a barrel. And these are the production forecasts by Serica for their 2022 production. And you'll notice that they are being very cautious and they give a quite a large range between their low and high cases. There's about 6,000, 6,500 barrel difference between their low case and the high case, so about 25%. Okay, and we are going to assume that GBP US dollar is about 138, where it is now. Uptime is around 95%. Now, you've seen that these are aging fields and the infrastructure is aging, and it is possible that unexpected events will occur as happened last year when the Bruce Field had to be closed. But we're going to assume 95%, but there obviously are downside risks to that. And if you go through the annual report, you can work out that in 2020, their production was 80% gas, 12% oil, and 8% condensate. And we are going to assume that the condensate price is at a 10% discount to Brent. Now, one thing that I could not find was the net cost for transmission of their oil and gas via the 40s pipeline. Now, the 40s pipeline is owned by Ineos, and they will be charging Serica for using the pipeline. I can't find any cost um, numbers. However, in 2020, Serica reports that the average sale price, sale price for their crude was $42.4 a barrel, and the average price for Brent during the year was 41.96. So their average selling price was actually above the average price of Brent. And so I'm assuming that I can ignore the pipeline transmission costs. And if we then do a calculation, and I will be posting the spreadsheet I used to calculate this on our Discord channel for people to play around with it. And so in the low production case, using those assumptions, I get to a P ratio of about 4.3. And in the high production case of about three. And if we go bullish on oil and gas, so we move oil up to $80 as a barrel, which is frankly quite plausible, and gas at 80p a therm, which is less plausible, I think. The doubling, doubling the gas price would have serious knock-on effects and would dampen demand. And gas supply will hopefully come back in 2022, particularly from the US. But in the low production case, that would give a P ratio of three. And in the high production case, that would give a P ratio of two. So if oil and gas prices go north of here, these shares are really very good value and they are paying a decent dividend, which can only be expected to rise. Okay, so these are the historic numbers and you'll see that essentially, prior to the purchase of the um, Bruce, Keith and Rumfields, essentially it was a very small company, but since then it has grown rapidly. It made an operating loss in 2020 on low oil and gas prices, but obviously, going forwards, it will get all the revenues from the Bruce and Keith Fields and 50% of rum. So positives. Well, UK gas price is very high. And hence, we're looking at Serica because we're trying to find 
UK natural gas producers who will benefit from that. And we expect that gas prices will remain elevated, though not at these current stratospheric levels, throughout the winter. And Serica produces 80% gas and is only 25% hedged. So it will be benefiting from the high oil and gas prices we're seeing now. Um, as we've discussed, it now receives 100% of the cash flows from Bruce and Keith. And the workover of the R3 well on rum has boosted production there. And in Q4, Columbus should come online, further boosting its production. And Columbus will be 75% gas. And then in 2022, we have the North Egg Exploration Well which could provide further upside and the shares are not expensive. So assuming oil at $70 and natural gas at 60 p a therm in 2022, you have an P ratio of 3.6, 3.7 and the mid range production guidance. Negatives, well, the spread between the high and low production forecasts is about 25%, which is um, suggests some degree of uncertainty or the, the um, management just being incredibly cautious. And these are old fields which are decaying, essentially. As they decay, that causes production problems and they need to be closed. And that, that is an uncertainty and in 2020, the Brusque field was closed for 45 days. And so there's the danger of further delays going forward. Then they only have two exploration assets, really, that they are a big economic interest in, the North and South Egg fields. And they've high graded North Egg for exploration this in 2022. But once that done, there's not much else. They've got some blocks which they're doing 3D seismic on and uh, they will need to replace production going forward because these fields, particularly Bruce and Keith, are old fields in decline, Erskine as well, actually. And obviously they've hedged 25% of production at prices much lower than uh, the current market price, which is a drag on revenue, sadly. Okay, so overall, I have quite a large position in Serica and it has been going up in the last few days. And if you expect that the UK gas price to remain elevated, then Serica stands to do very well. And based on our calculation, the shares seem pretty good value. So if you're interested in investing in a company that um, has exposure to the rising UK natural gas price, Serica would seem a reasonable bet. Okay, that's it. Please can you press like and subscribe to the channel. I apologize for the lack of Richard who has gone on holiday but I thought it was important to get this out uh, as soon as possible so um, in the meantime it's goodbye from me Keith Jordan goodbye full disclaimer the material and information contained in this podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for making a business legal or any other decision we may own or have a financial interest in any securities mentioned Listeners should conduct their own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. Whilst we endeavour to ensure that the information presented on the show is correct, we make no representations or warranties of any kind, expressed or implied, with respect to the podcast and website or to any information, products, services or related graphics discussed or presented in the podcast or website. Any reliance you place on such material is strictly at your own risk. You are solely responsible for the investment decisions you make. We will not be responsible for any errors or omissions in the podcast or website, including in articles or postings, for hyperlinks embedded in messages, or for any results obtained from the use of such information. Nor will we be liable for any loss or damage, including consequential damages, if any, caused by a reader's reliance on any information provided by the podcast or website. 
Please do not listen to the podcast if you do not accept self-responsibility for your actions.